I'm back. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Enoch. I'm back for another reaction. Um, I've seen this one a couple of times in the comment section. What powers do the Queen of England actually have? And this is something I was actually wondering on our first video. Since then, we've done three reaction videos and the response has just been amazing. Uh, we did a community vote the other day, 192 voters, and it looks like Scotland will be the next country we invade with our reactions when we're done with England. Um, because like the first video, the second video, which was UK invasions, you guys have invaded my channel. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, this guy said, I talk too slow. I'm putting him to sleep. Will I talk faster? No. <laughs> Make sure to hit that subscribe button. YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at what powers the Queen of England actually has. So a short while ago, we put out a video about the fact that Queen Elizabeth II neither needs a passport nor a driving license thanks to a quirk of British law. But what other powers does the Queen of many titles have, and what could she theoretically do if she decided to flex the full might of the authority that she wields? As it turns out, thanks to the royal prerogative, a terrifying amount, if she really felt like it, or really? at least that's assuming Parliament went by the letter of the law and that the people didn't decide to stage a small revolt. In reality, the Queen rarely exerts even a fraction of the power that she theoretically wields, as it's kept in check by the only person in the UK who can tell her what to do, and that's herself. This is very much a calculated move on her part in order to stay in the good graces of her subjects. She also voluntarily pays her taxes, even though she's not technically obligated to, and that helps with people's opinion of her. Not only does she avoid openly flexing her political might, she also tends to keep her opinions outside of the public sphere. As historian Frank Prohaska notes, the real secret that's, of royal influence that's really smart as far as like keeping your opinions kind of not necessarily to yourself but keeping them out of the public's eye is saying nothing and anything the queen does say publicly is pretty anodyne the minute a monarch or many of the royals say anything remotely political or opinionated they alienate people and they lose some power yep. this silence played Dang. a large part in how the british monarchy survived post world war one when other european royal families didn't in fact, for nearly two decades now, the monarchy has regularly had polls run and focus groups put together to keep track of how the general public feels about them and their various actions. They okay. also have on payroll Smart. individuals whose job it is to ensure the queen stays in the public eye and in a way that is most likely to endear her to her subjects. Similar mm. to politicians who rely on the voting public, with each public change she presents, right down to the carrying of a cell phone or not, carefully calculated in terms of the impact it might have. While this may seem only self-serving, the queen has a very lengthy track record as an admirable public. I don't find it self-serving. I find it extremely intelligent and I feel like it's what's best for the, you know, her and the crown. You know what I mean? So I, I don't think it's self-serving at all. Just want to let you guys know that's my perception. I think it's extremely smart. Servants, and is also acutely aware that she is a prominent public face representing her subjects. So is keen on avoiding being viewed in a bad light, lest she in turn paints them in a bad light by her actions. As she noted at the tender age of 21 in a speech to the Commonwealth she gave on her birthday, I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family, to which we all belong. Surprisingly, for many years, the full extent of exactly what powers the Queen handed off to the government, but technically retained, weren't publicly known. That is, until 2003, when the government released a partial list of the things it can do on the Queen's behalf. For the most part, mm. the list confirms that the government could do things to save the Queen time, such as issue or revoke passports, which simply wouldn't be a feasible thing to be the sole prerogative of the Crown in a modern yeah. society. No, that makes sense. However, some were actually slightly worried by some of the things she could do, like declare war, which under the rules of royal prerogative can be done without consulting parliament On what she can just say let's go to war dude wow bro don't piss her off dude like bro don't piss her off top of that, the Queen is totally immune from prosecution and is considered above the law in the UK and further as a head of state what no way dude that's freaking awesome that's some freaking cowboy junk if I've ever heard it that's freaking lit Okay, dude, so, man, that is freaking amazing, bro. Just the how you revere her. I love that.
state, she also enjoys diplomatic immunity in any foreign country she happens to visit. As such, she could commit any crime conceivable anywhere on Earth, at least as the law currently stands, and suffer no legal consequences. Wait. So she can go to another country, break the law there, and suffer no legal consequences for doing so. All right. I didn't want to do it, but it looks like it's going to end up going that route. So I'm just going to, I'm going to say what most Americans would probably think here. If she came to America and she ran a red light, I don't know, murder. Well, if she ran a red light and they found out that she was the queen of England, they probably wouldn't do anything. They'd probably, oh, it's freaking awesome. Got to take a picture. That's the way Americans are. Um, hey, selfie. If someone, let's just, let's not talk about the queen. Let's, let's say there's another monarch. If King Edward the first back in those William Wallace days, like killed somebody in America, in modern day America, he could get away with it. Huh. And I may be reaching, you know what I mean? Like, this is what I'm getting. I may find out more in a little bit, but that's what I'm saying. Like, huh. I'm help me out guys. Help me, <laughs> help me understand for doing so. However, as with everything else, she's generally exceptionally careful to ensure that she doesn't Sorry. break any laws. Of course, what she does in private is completely her own affair, despite her prominent political position, as she is exempt from freedom of information requests. So, moving on, because technically speaking, the people of Britain are not citizens, but subjects of the monarch, she could have mm. anyone she wanted arrested and presumably seize their property or land what? for the crown. Speaking of which, the Queen owns all of the seabeds around the UK. Bro, like... Do not be mean to the queen. That's all I'm hearing, bro. Like, she is a freaking black widow. She will eat your head off, bro. That's what it sounds like, dude. Like, if you, I don't know, if you if you tick her off in public, if you tick her off at all, like, and you get on her bad side, oh my gosh, bro. That's crazy. I know she likes to watch the Highland Games, and I wonder, like, if she went to the Highland Games and, like, I don't know, bro, she was just having a bad day. And she wanted you to win, you didn't. And she's just like, you know what, dude? Incarcerate him, dude. And can commandeer any ship found in British waters for service to the realm. Oddly enough, she also has first dibs on any whales that wash up on shore. The queen could also administer- What? Do you guys have whales wash up on shore? Is that real? And why would you want first dibs? What is that about? Guys, hold on. Oddly enough, she also has first dibs on any whales that wash up on shore. What? What is that? Whales that wash up on shore. The queen could also administer any manner of punishment to an individual who offended or otherwise displeased her, as the crown has prerogative power to keep the peace within the realm. Wow. And since she's immune from prosecution, nobody could really do anything if this punishment wasn't entirely within the scope of the law. If the government tried to stop her, the queen could decimate the British political landscape by dissolving parliament and appointing anyone she felt like as prime minister. This is because it's the queen's duty to appoint the prime minister, and she could, in theory, appoint anyone she wanted to the position regardless of the way the British public voted in an election. Oh, On top wow. of that, in the event the Queen didn't like the outcome of an election, for instance if she didn't like the replacement parliament members that were voted in, she could just call for another one using royal prerogative until what? she got the parliament she wanted. Not that she'd need to because if she really wanted she'd just bring in the army to keep everyone in line. But how does that work? How does she control the army? Well that's because the Queen is also the commander-in-chief of the entire British military with every officer, soldier, sailor and pilot swearing allegiance to the crown and nobody else. They're not called Her Majesty's Armed Forces for nothing. Being considered the ultimate authority on all British military matters, the Queen could authorize a nuclear strike on France or make North Korea an ally, as she has the power to declare both war and peace with foreign nations. As for laws, well, oh the my Queen God. can't create new laws. She can only sign them into law after they've been decided upon by Parliament. In fact, her royal assent is required to make the law official after being passed by Parliament in the first place. She could appoint ministers who'd make any laws she wanted a reality and then just sign them into law that way. Beyond royal assent, there's also the the Queen's consent, which requires she give her consent before any law that affects the interests of the monarchy can even be discussed at all in Parliament. She actually has used this power before, such as in 99 when she refused to allow the discussion of a bill that would have given Parliament power to authorize military strikes in Iraq instead of needing her authorization. So, well, that's all on the political wow. side, but it doesn't stop here. The Queen uh. technically has a sort of power not only over her subjects' physical beings, but also their souls. 
Well, how? Well, that's because she's also the head of the Church of England, including having the power to appoint archbishops and power over many other such matters concerning the Church. Okay. As for most of these powers that technically allow her to rule with an iron fist, as previously mentioned, the Queen is hesitant to ever use them in such a way that would displease her subjects, and certainly isn't about to disregard their representatives in Parliament. However, these powers still exist for a variety of reasons, including potentially being needed in times of extreme crisis. That said, just because she isn't in the practice of exercising her powers against the will of the people, it doesn't mean she isn't occasionally an active political powerhouse in private. Extremely well respected and known worldwide with the ability to bend the ear of most heads of state, the influence the Queen wields is difficult to quantify, but as noted in an article discussing why the BBC named the Queen the most powerful woman in the world in their list of 100 most powerful women, Her yeah. Majesty's power is more about influence. A discreet nod of the head, a polite word in the ear of mm. a Prime Minister at their weekly meeting, or a strategic patronage of a cause being overlooked by the government, is how she can indirectly affect our world without right. us even knowing. Subtly, well, yeah. to conclude, the Queen has many powers she could theoretically really use to her own ends unless her subjects and Parliament simply decided to stage a revolution. However, she generally avoids doing anything overt that might upset her subjects and otherwise simply works in the background, more or less in an advisory role when she feels there is a need. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Now, if you are interested in protecting your privacy online well then you really should have a vpn now vpns are something bro what the frick bro the the queen is queen dude what the frick man i didn't think bro i knew like through what you guys were saying i knew through what you guys were saying and trying to communicate to me that she still was in charge of a lot of things and she could make moves when she wanted to I had had no idea the depth of uh, really where everything's rooted at. So that blows my mind. So there's not one person uh, technically or by law who's above the law in America, or so they say, but we see it all over the news all the time, people getting away with stuff. Anyway, um, but that is freaking insane. And the fact that she has maturely handled it so well, she's been very disciplined in just the way that she carries herself, you know? Um, that's amazing. And I think that holds a lot of integrity for the crown and for the, you know, the law in the, in the UK. So I'm freaking impressed, man. Like I am impressed, dude. Wow. God save the queen. What would you like me to react to? Tell me in the comments below. Thank you for subscribing, liking, following.